What's up guys, I'm going to review what Nimael Delgado eats in a day. He's only really known for his heavy steroid use, so it will be interesting to see what he eats. Not a day goes by without someone asking me or messaging me, what do I eat as a vegan? Now, I get it. They most likely ask him how to do a good cycle. That most people that are transitioning to a vegan lifestyle have no clue what vegans really eat, or maybe they just think that they eat salads. But I'm here to tell you that we eat much more than just salads. To be honest, I don't really even eat that many salads. I do like an occasional one, but... Vegetables are man-made. They are toxic. Of course, humans don't like to eat salads. Vegans are no exception. I prefer more calorie-dense, hearty meals like you see right here. So I thought I would take an opportunity to reintroduce myself to YouTube and get back to my roots. So I built much of this channel. A hearty meal usually just means meat replacement and how is broccoli part of a hearty meal? <laughs> talking about fitness, talking about vegan nutrition, here is a look at what I eat in a day. The only thing that's missing here is my morning smoothie, which I will get into in just a second, but really, this is it. And just to give you context, for me, my maintenance calories are anywhere from like 2,500 calories to 3,000 calories. So I do eat quite a lot, but I also... Realistically, if a vegan eats 2,500 calories, he's going to get 2,000 at most, most likely around 1,500. I have quite a bit of muscle on my body, which then raises your basal metabolic rate. So I need more calories to sustain this muscle mass. So these are the four main components. He needs calories to sustain muscle, right? Yeah, that's what sustains muscle. Broccoli, tofu, as I said, broccoli is of course very toxic. It has a very strong toxin, which kills all of your cells called sulforaphane. There's also goitrogens. It's one of the most toxic plants on earth, which doesn't exist in nature. It's completely man-made. Sweet potatoes are very hard to digest. Starch in general is not part of the natural human food, which is why it always causes bloating and indigestion. Rice, uh, if that's white rice, is better than rice with a shell, of course, because it has less added nutrients, but there's still arsenic in there. And uh, again, you're just eating sugar. Rice really only has sugar. That's it. It's the same as eating candy, essentially. And tofu, which is estrogenic and, of course, is absolutely anti-muscle building. Components of my second and third meal. What I like to do... Carbs... Uh, yeah, you would be getting a lot of carbs out of that for sure. That's pretty much the only calories that you would be getting. Fat, you would be getting none of, obviously, because there's essentially no fat in a vegan diet. Fat is animal fat. There's a lot of plant oils, but uh, that's not uh, what humans use as fat in the body, in the cells. And uh, you would not be getting that much protein at all, <laughs> for sure. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just take it all out and then put it into a plate and then whatever I feel like eating, um, you know, I'll portion it out and then just make sure I eat this by the end of the day. And in between my meal two... Of course he had to show himself eating the broccoli just to prove it to everybody that yes, I do eat it. In meal three, I will have some type of snack. Normally I love fruit, so I just have here a banana for today, but I normally swap this out with uh, like peaches or dragon fruit or watermelon or berries or whatever it is, uh, just like a nice healthy snack. Look, I am not a chef. The fruits of today are by no means a healthy snack, seeing as they have a way too high amount of sugar and almost no micronutrients left anymore. Like, I will be the first person to tell you I'm not a chef. It's pretty funny to me that so many people come to me asking me what to cook and, and what to eat because I don't feel qualified whatsoever to be offering people recipes. Like for me, a recipe is just a combination of some really basic ingredients because... Uh, That's funny, he doesn't feel qualified to talk about recipes, but he does recommend people to eat a vegan diet and talks about nutrition as if he understands anything about that, which he obviously doesn't because plants don't have over 15 micronutrients in general, which means that on a vegan diet, you're always going to be missing incredibly many micronutrients. 
which is going to lead to malnutrition. That he doesn't understand, but uh, no, he doesn't want to talk about recipes. Uh, I've never really been trained how to cook, so what you see here is just me learning over the years, and I'm very much a utilitarian, so uh, if it's simple, if it's less than 30 minutes for me to prepare, there's a good chance I'll make it. If it takes longer than 30 minutes, there's a good chance I won't bother, just because I don't like spending too much time in the kitchen. Props to those who love cooking. I'm much more of a person that wants to get in and get out and start eating, so the longer it takes, the more uh, hangry I'll get. Right now, my goal is to just maintain. That's because it's unnatural to wait for food or to cook it and create recipes and so on. Natural food is eaten in its raw form and humans in nature eat raw meat. They hunt an animal and eat it. That's it, which is exactly why he feels the way he feels. I really love my morning smoothie. I've been making this recipe for a couple years now and it's my staple. It's delicious. I include some plant milk. I'll have one scoop of veg vanilla or just any of the different flavors of veg nutrition protein powder. I'll throw in one scoop of creatine plus, which is a great supplement for anybody out there that's an athlete and wants to train. It's very interesting that he takes creatine because creatine as such is obviously an animal amino acid. So either he's not vegan or he's taking something very toxic and the supplements are also made with petroleum, which means that he's definitely ingesting some kind of toxins. Recommending it to a vegan doesn't make any sense at all. And receive the benefits of creatine, I highly recommend it. I'll add banana and berries. The other thing that I like to add to my smoothies is amla powder, which is also known as Indian gooseberry. And the reason I put that in there is it's loaded with vitamin C and also packed with antioxidants. It has one of the highest antioxidant concentrations of any berry. So at Plants, of course, don't have antioxidants. They only have pro-oxidants. They protect the plants themselves, but for humans, those are pro-oxidants. Adding that to my smoothie is gonna help my body recover faster so that I can get back into the gym and push myself and keep making gains. Along with my first meal, I like to take my capsule supplements. So what you'll see here is the Veg Essential. This little guy is a once a day capsule that has vitamin B12, vitamin D3, omega-3s, as that already doesn't make any sense. B12 is again an animal vitamin and vitamin D3 again, animal hormone. <laughs> How can you get an animal hormone in a vegan supplement? Man, this guy is not making any sense at all. And uh, then of course, there's omega freeze. Omega freeze are animal fatty acids. How can it be in a vegan supplement? What is this guy actually taking? As well as K2. And K2 is also an animal vitamin. There is no plant or vegan version of it. What is actually in there? Either, again, he's not a vegan or it's completely synthetic and toxic. And if you're a vegan or you're somebody that's plant-based, you want to ensure that you're consuming these vitamins on a daily basis. Because yeah, because all of that is missing in a vegan diet. Of course, he's admitting to everybody that veganism or the vegan diet is uh, deficient. As it is difficult to get the adequate amount from- It's impossible. They are not found in any plants. From your food and with things like B12, you, you just want to supplement anyway. It's not just a vegan issue of, of getting suboptimal levels of B12. The other thing- It is only a vegan issue that I, I take is the Veg Turmeric Plus. So this is a Ayurvedic blend. It contains turmeric, ashwagandha, and rhodiola rosea. So these three in combination will help reduce inflammation. There's a lot of other benefits from it. <laughs> it makes no sense at all. Those are some of the most inflammatory plants on earth. They're gonna cause insane inflammation. Your joints are gonna be completely inflamed. They are incredibly toxic. Like, what is this guy talking about? Jesus. <laughs> Ashwagandha as well with when it comes to testosterone and with the rhodiola rosea, it helps with mood stabilization or your just overall mood support to keep your spirits up. So I like taking that. Uh, let's start off with the tofu. So I like to use this brand of tofu just because it is one of the highest protein per gram uh, tofu out there. You can get this at Whole Foods. I, I believe that Trader Joe's and Sprouts also carries its own version or its own brand of this exact same sprouted tofu. So this is what I like to use. Um, that one container contains over, I, I believe about 70 grams of protein. So 
what I will do is I will chop the tofu up into some really small blocks and then I will just add a marinade. I like to use this coconut aminos teriyaki sauce. I obviously don't avoid soy and you don't have to either as long as you're getting organic soy. Uh, it's a great source of protein and no, it will not feminize you or lower your testosterone levels. That is just misinformation and I won't get into it in this video, but Hmm, I do wonder why he says that it's misinformation. Even all of the studies show that it of course does mess with the hormones of men and women because it actually literally attaches to the cell receptors. It's a sort of anti-nutrient that's supposed to mess with your body because you're not supposed to eat seeds and uh, those tofu blocks are essentially made out of seeds. It's just been processed so much. It's just completely illogical to say that it doesn't cause these problems when these kind of plants are made to cause problems simply because you're not supposed to eat them. It's just absolutely common sense. Yes, I eat soy. I eat plenty of it on a daily basis, obviously. What I will do is I will throw all of those spices and the marinade into- Actually, he has a very typical appearance and body, similar to Brian Turner, I believe his name is, who also eats a lot of soy but takes steroids. The voice changed over time for Brian Turner a lot, I showed this in a video, and his voice is also kind of feminine and the way he acts, but then he also says, don't worry about testosterone, but of course you don't have to worry about testosterone when you're a drug addict and that's what you are, you're a loser, you completely failed in life, you're at the lowest possible point that you could be at, and he tells his audience, don't worry about it, I take drugs and I don't have a problem with it, but you do have a problem because you can still see how it feminizes you. Tofu is, is pretty bland by itself. It's just, I, I would imagine like chicken, if you don't flavor it with anything, it's not gonna taste that great. It does absorb flavor and marinades very well. What do you mean everybody likes chicken in itself? <laughs> Tofu is absolute garbage and is unnatural. Unnatural food you have to flavor, natural food you don't have to flavor. So making it this way is really, really easy and really delicious too. You can see how nice it came out. So that is- Yeah, it absolutely 100% looks like a meat imitation. Broccoli, so same thing. I will rinse it under the sink with some water and the spray before chopping it up. And then I will- uh, I wonder why he eats bullet. the broccoli. Okay. He probably wouldn't even be able to explain broccoli. it anyway. And threw it into a bowl and then also added some lemon juice and some garlic before tossing it into the air fryer. And then finally, what you'll see here is this frozen pre-made batch of lentils. And this batch of lentils was actually made by Bianca's grandmother. She was visiting us the other day and she is this Looks super disgusting, like cute. She's Cuban. This is my favorite source of protein, especially for those that want to avoid soy. Like I said, there's no reason to, but if you do want to avoid soy, then lentils would be my next recommendation. The biological value of lentils is actually very low, which means that you cannot get almost no protein out of them. As in, you can't break down the protein, you can't get to the amino acids just because of all of the anti-nutrients. There you have it. These are you know, this is what I eat. This is what I'm eating today. This is not what I eat every day, but this is what I happen to be eating today. What an absolute joke of a video. If he was honest, then he would tell everybody that he's a failure. He didn't see any meaning in life, so he started using drugs. And now he's a drug addict lying to everybody. If you would eat this to gain muscle as a normal guy, then you would most definitely lose muscle. It is impossible to gain anything. Broccoli? Absolutely toxic, no muscle gains whatsoever, only muscle loss. Rice, lentils, again, only muscle loss. Sweet potatoes, just nothing. Indigestible, bloating, starch, sugar, <laughs> banana, and then some supplements. Maybe some of the protein powder. You can get some little bit of protein out of that. That was the best thing in that sense that he consumed. As far as muscle building goes, of course, protein powder is absolute garbage. And also it's going to cause a lot of indigestion in the long term is going to destroy your digestion. Point being, everybody who would try to eat this way would very quickly realize that it's impossible to gain muscle. <laughs> Thanks for watching.